snacks. What's going on, everybody? We're back for another week to celebrate romance and anime for the whole month of February. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into it with our next one, which is recovery of an MMO junkie. Look, off break, this one caught me straight off the title. Like, understand, I was a very avid MMO player back in the day when I played PC games like that. Like, I'm talking from Ultima Online to EverQuest, Dark Age of Camelot, Anarchy Online, pretty much up until WoW came out, and then I went back to console gaming, which is where I live at nowadays. Um, but I completely got pulled in when I saw the title because my brain started racing of where it could go. <clears throat> So let's just start with what this show is about. Let's kind of break down the first episode here. So the show revolves around a young woman named Monica, who's in her 30s, and she has decided that she has had it with her job. She just can't do it anymore. Uh, so she's going to quit and become a neat. Now, for those of you who do not know what a neat is, the first time I heard this term was some years ago on another anime, uh, Eden of the East. So I'm gonna give you the definition of what a NEAT stands for, N-E-E-T. A NEAT means not in education, employment, or training. So basically, they, they don't plan on getting a job, they don't want a job, they're not going to school, they don't want to go through some training, they just are done with it, and just want to live life and be left alone, pretty much. Uh, and that's what she's decided. So, got her stuff, she go home, she crashes, she wakes up in the morning and realizes, wait, I don't have to go to work anymore. Okay, so she heads over to her PC, boots it up and sees an icon on there of an MMO she used to play a long time ago. Just thinking, you know what? Let me see if there's new, a new game out I would like to you know, jump into. So she searches the web, finds something that piques her interest, and decides, yep, I'm gonna dive in on this one. She makes a character, she makes a guy, handsome guy as she puts it. <laughs> makes a guy character, <clears throat> and enters the world and if anybody who played MMOs know, starting off in an MMO could be very difficult and very tricky getting a handle on the mechanic, mechanics and just how it all works. Um, and during this time of getting slaughtered over and over again, she runs into a young girl named Lily, who she sees she's having trouble like, look, this game can be real difficult in the beginning to get started with. Let me give you a hand, teach you some pointers, you know, back you up, I can heal you, stuff like that. So they build a, a friendship. <clears throat> and Lily's helping her, you know, get her act together. And in this world, Morgo is playing it as if I am a guy. Like, she's not... In a lot of these games, people don't like to break that barrier. Like, when you're in the game, we only talk about in the game stuff. You don't pry on real world kind of stuff. Now, there are people who do do that and want to know, but that's how she's playing it, like... This is here, out there is just out there, keeping it separate. So at some point, uh, <clears throat> time goes by. You notice she's level one, she jumps to level 80. So a lot of time is going by. She's now joined up with their guild, so she has like a little in-game type of friends and family going on and stuff, and she's obviously full in on the MMO life now. So, uh, she decides that, you know what, let me get something to eat, go check her fridge, nothing's really in there. So she heads to the corner store, picks something up, on the way out, she runs into a guy, like literally <laughs> runs into the guy and he has to take her to the emergency room. Didn't this happen last week with the other anime I watched? They ran into each other and gotta get this. Apparently it's a thing in anime. They run into each other and that's how people meet. Right, and as you guessed it, she runs into her, the, the, the protagonist, the male protagonist, uh, by the name of Sakurai. And you know, like, you know, like he wants to like, look, my bad, I didn't see you there, I'm so sorry, let me, let me, let, me, let me treat you to a meal. Let me take you out. Just say I'm sorry. She's like, no, no, no. I'm fine. Because understand, like, she is not good with people. She's very self-conscious. Like, she doesn't think she's pretty. Like, she's, she's, she's one of those shut-in, like, shut-in type of people. Like, depressed, a lot of anxiety, like, stuff like that. So she pushes him off. She does eventually end up accepting his email. <clears throat> but unfortunately... She does end up brushing him off. Now, slight spoiler, because it is the worst kept secret in the show and not for very long, but Lily is him. So then the show becomes about a cat and mouse game of, 
are they going to figure it out that the people that are playing with in the game is the people they've met outside type of deal? You see what I'm saying? So, pretty much just with that right there, with that first episode, the question I always like to ask, should you guys at home take the time to give this one a watch? Let's think about this for a second. And with the theme of the month, I'm going to put this in romance terms. You know what? I had a great time tonight. Let's do this again sometime. So yes, I thoroughly enjoyed this show from beginning to end. So let's just get it started like at the top here with the opening credits and the outro. Music wise, nothing that's gonna like be a jingle for years to come or nothing like that. But within the scope of the show, it's cool. I did enjoy the visuals though. I like you seeing the characters getting created in the intro when it first starts off. I like that, like their avatars. And I love the visuals in the outro where it's kind of showing everybody in their real day life through screens that they look at most of the time. Like for her, it's her computer monitor. Like for another character, it's his cell phone. Like I thought that was pretty cool. I thought it was pretty creative. Uh, Overall, enjoyable. Uh, now, let's move on <laughs> to my favorite part, which is probably the characters itself. Um, I enjoyed all of the main characters. <clears throat> I really especially enjoyed Mordigo and her awkwardness. Like, she is so awkward. It is so hilarious to watch. Like, she'll get a compliment, like, from Lily and dive from the computer chair into a bed holding a bell of body pillow face ring just oh my gosh she's so cute I can't believe she said that like she's so awkward people give her compliments and stuff like that like and she is very very entertaining to watch now the support characters not so much uh they kind of feel just as like a backdrop to just kind of push her through the recovery part like keep keep pushing her like befriending her being like over the top with her sometimes like to help crack that that hard shell on her to get her out of her out of her cover zone and you know be more be more sociable and stuff like that now the two supporting characters i would say that i did like a lot was <clears throat> the guild leader i forget his name who she does end up meeting in real life uh and the male protagonist sakurai his best friend um Kawhi. he was absolutely hilarious for the entire show and he's a complete jackass pardon my friend but he is uh, but in a good way, like he, it's hard to tell at first, but like he's actually trying to get them together, but but in a very jackass kind of way, like doing stuff like, <clears throat> this is just an example, not that it happens, but, oh, you like that girl over there? Yeah, I like her, I want to talk to her. Oh, well, if you're going to talk to her, I'm going to talk to her. You ain't going to do that. Okay, well, I'm going over here right now on my cell phone. Excuse me, no, I'm going to talk to her, I'm going to talk to her, I'm going to talk to her, like, he does stuff like that to try to p play games and maneuver in ways to get them to talk to each other and stuff like that. Like, I really, really enjoyed his role in the show. He was very entertaining to watch. Now, like I said last episode, I've been watching these for a while. So where it stands in the hierarchy, I'm not going to say it's upper echelon material, but it's still very good. I would recommend it for somebody to watch, definitely. I do, though, wish that there was more on the romantic side of things, but I do understand the story is primarily focused on the recovery of an MMO junkie. Overall, I think a lot of people from gamers to people in these social spaces, whether it's VR chat or, or there's online social media, <clears throat> who suffer from depression and anxiety uh, and find it difficult to build real world connections sometimes uh, would really like this show and love her story and see her go through it and you will and you will definitely be championing her to push through it all uh, by the end of it definitely uh, and I suggest you definitely check it out like I completely understood her story I have been there before I completely got it and I was rocking with it the whole time and I was one of those people pulling for her all the way to the end like come on you got this girl you, you can get through this so with that said, y'all know what to do. Let me know in the comments. How did y'all feel about this? Yes, I want y'all to go watch it, come back, get in the comments, and uh, tell me what y'all think about it. And for real, I mean, if you feel comfortable, let's talk about some of the issues you might have had and maybe how this show could have possibly helped you, if it didn't help you at all. Uh, so until next week, I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces.
What's going on, everybody? Did you enjoy what you saw? Of course you did. So if you want to help us out and support us, here's what you can do. On whatever platform you're currently streaming us on, just like, share, and subscribe. Then head over to patreon.com forward slash loading snacks and become one of our patrons there. 